The big question for this segment is, how did humans develop more powerful forms of language and communication? Plenty of animals communicate with each other, that is, transmit information. This might be done visually, like a male peacock displaying its brightly colored feathers as a courtship gesture. Or it might be a sign of aggression from a dog by baring its teeth. Or it might be a prairie dog letting out a warning yell that a predator is nearby. It might even be something as intricate as bird song or whale songs over large distances. But the jury is still out on the evolutionary causes for why humans developed more powerful forms of language and communication. In order to transmit increasingly intricate, precise, often abstract, and complicated information, and in order to allow that information to be retained and improved over time, there has to be one heck of an evolutionary explanation for it. What we know of other primates is that communication is also important to maintain their fairly complex social hierarchies and alliances. Chimps, for instance, are able to communicate a wide range of information and can even be taught to recognize quite a few symbols on par with a human toddler. Their larynxes do mean that they are only able to vocalize a limited range of sounds, though. This seems to have remained the case in the Australopithecines and Homo habilis. There is some debate whether even the Neanderthals had more limitations on sound than humans. That said, much of primate communication is done, like with many other animals, through gesticulation. Even today, a large part of human communication from day to day is by gesture, from hand gestures to tiny facial signals to convey information. Even without language, our hominine ancestors like Homo erectus, Homo antecessor, Homo heidelbergensis, and the Neanderthals were able to communicate information, adapt to new environments, use tools, and travel across the world. But there's a heck of a lot of capacity for complex language and abstract thought in humans. At some point in our evolutionary history, this went into overdrive. The question is, what were the evolutionary pressures and process? You need a lot of brain power to harness more powerful forms of communication. This takes energy that might otherwise go elsewhere. So there has to be a good reason for this to be chosen by natural selection. Hypotheses range across a number of evolutionary mechanisms and pathways. One hypothesis is that more complex language evolved as a form of kin selection, favoring better communication between mothers and their offspring for survival purposes, and eventually spreading out as useful for the rest of the group. One variation of the theory is that when hominines stopped carrying their infants on their backs, mothers needed another way to attend to the needs of their young when they were busy foraging for food. Another hypothesis is that it evolved as a method of exchange between individuals. If one primate communicates some precise and useful information to another, that primate might get some useful information in return, enhancing their survival. Yet another hypothesis is that as group sizes in hominines got larger, sometime between Homo habilis 2.8 million years ago and Homo erectus 1.9 million years ago, due to the success of their use of tools and other adaptations, old ways of forming alliances became unwieldy. Primates often groom each other to socialize and build bonds and quite crucial alliances. But if you are in a larger group, it may be impossible to groom everyone so you transition to another form of building bonds and crucial alliances, having a chat. First with pleasing sounds, later with more intricate exchanges of information. It is possible that this might have played a role in the dramatic increase in brain size between habilis and erectus and continuing to humans. Some theorists think that intricate human language evolved alongside the evolution of symbolism that would take hold in a group of hominines and that the social circumstances of their fledgling culture, alliances, and even rituals would spawn more intricate language and abstract thought in order to deal with those forces. Another hypothesis is that when hominines began using tools on a more regular basis, they no longer had their hands free to communicate by gesture, so they had to evolve stronger vocalizations in order to communicate effectively and survive. There is the possibility that it evolved out of mimicking, Lots of primates mimic each other's actions in order to learn how to do specific tasks. It is possible that hominines began mimicking each other's sounds, particularly in childhood, and eventually arrived at clearer pronunciations and more specific meanings, which enhanced communication and thus survival, leading to the runaway process of language's evolution.
Yet another possibility is that it may have evolved as a form of sexual selection. It is possible that hominine females preferred mates that were capable of two things. One, expressing themselves with such a range of ways that the male essentially talked their way into a relationship. And two, females may have preferred males that were able to both transmit and receive pertinent information so they increased their chances of survival and their ability to provide for their young. Another possibility along similar lines is that while primate hierarchies and alliances are generally quite complex, a catastrophic period in human evolution may have made it harder to obtain food, mates, or both. As a result, the competition within a hierarchy may have become more intense, favoring greater creativity, better forms of communication, better ways of forging alliances, and nascent forms of abstract thought, all in the service of getting their share of food and access to mates. A related theory is that the emergence of abstract and symbolic thought may have emerged very late in hominine evolution, precipitated by some disaster like climate change that prompted the sudden emergence of more symbolic and abstract thought, and perhaps a universal grammar, perhaps shown in the sudden appearance of human cave art well into the 250,000 year existence of our species. Others pushed the transition back slightly earlier to Homo heidelbergensis 600,000 years ago, driven by more physiological changes that may have enabled a wider range of sounds. Others placed the transition at Neanderthals, who perhaps developed the physical capacity to speak with a full range of sounds, but perhaps had not yet developed the same capacity for symbolic thought. Another hypothesis is that once enough neurological and physical capacity emerged in hominines for a range of sounds, language itself may have become subject to a form of collective learning, tinkering, and improvement. As a result, hominines themselves might have taken over their language like a tool, tinkered with it, and opted for either more aesthetically pleasing forms of vocalization or clearer and more useful forms. Language and the human brain may have then entered a co-evolutionary pathway where our neurological and physical ability to deliver language may have grown with our ability to tinker and improve upon it within a single lifetime. All of these contending lines of thought leave open questions and each theorist has been subject to criticism from their scientific rivals. I won't weigh in on the debate here, picking one hypothesis over the other. This very much remains an open question. But I hope I've provided you with a smorgasbord of tantalizing hypotheses, tasty possibilities, and some food for thought. The sum and total of the process, whatever it was, is that from the complex hierarchies and intellectual capabilities of primates to the unique pressures that gave way to bipedalism and tool innovation, humans developed immense capacities for communication, accumulation of knowledge generation after generation, which would lead to the immense rise of the social complexity that was to come. Mm -hmm.